You know, in the annals of TV villainy, I don't think there's ever been a character more hated than the character of Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie. Allison Arngrim joins us tonight. She played Nellie Olson on Little House, basically infuriating people for uh, generations. I mean, seriously, you know, you think about uh, all these uh, bad guys on TV, but when you mention Nellie Olson, you know, there's a look that comes across people's faces and they say, well, that was the most despicable child that ever lived. You see that they're like a hater. Yes. It's so cool that you've embraced this role because so many actors, you know, if they have a role that they're so closely identified with, they say, I don't want to discuss it. You know, I'm... Which I've always thought was weird. <laughs> that is strange. <laughs> Why would you do that? Wait, is it paying your bills? What? No, we should be talking about that. And the thing is, you know, boys who grew up in the 70s won't admit that they watch Little House. You know, they'll say, oh, I watched Dukes of Hazard and Buck Rogers and Incredible Hulk. And, and I'm sure we all did. But let's not kid ourselves. We all watched Little House on the Prairie. And if you're a guy like me... You know, I, I've never even mentioned this sort of thing on the air before, but I don't really cry in real life, you know, if something bad happens. But if I'm watching a, a TV show that has a sad storyline, I cry at the drop of a hat, you know? Little House makes everyone cry. That's right. what it means. Is I've had women tell me, oh, their husband, he lies and says he never watches it, but he's like gets up in the morning before work at the construction site, you know, and sits there and cries in front of the show. Well, Nellie was just so cruel to uh, poor little Laura, you know, and it's it's a fictional character, but in a way it's not because everybody in the uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder books, uh, you know, are based on, on real people, and, and so was Nellie Olson. Exactly. Her real name was Nellie Owens, and she's buried in uh, Oregon, just outside of Portland. You can go to Forest Grove, mm-hmm. um, because uh, the uh, Ingalls and Olson have all their kerfuffle in Walnut Grove, and it was the Owens family, and it was... Uh, instead of Nels and Harriet, it was Margaret and, and uh, something. I'm trying to remember, what was it? Oh, oh, I think it was Nels, but she was Margaret, not Harriet. And Nellie and Willie were Nellie and Willie, but they were Owens, not Olsen. Mm-hmm. And they moved to Oregon. I always heard it was like Tillamook, and they were big in cheese or something. <laughs> and Nellie did marry, and she had three kids, but she got divorced. And I actually met one of Nellie's descendants, this guy in Texas. I actually talked to him on the phone. I think it was Nellie's great-grandson. Well, that's freaky. It was completely <laughs> freaky. It was so weird. And then I found out where she's buried, and I have been to my own grave, essentially. <laughs> I have been to the grave of Nellie Olson, wow. which was really surreal. You know, there's part of me that thinks there's no way the real Nellie Olson could have been as bad as she was portrayed on the show. I mean, she had to have been so much nicer. <laughs> right? And here well, she's... Although, I kept trying to dig her because, like, there was a, a big debate in Walnut Grove. Someone had a letter, like, when the books came out in the 30s, they had a letter from someone who had known Laura and Nellie and Willie, and they wrote a letter saying, this is not true, she's being framed, she was a lovely girl, Laura's just blaming stuff on Nellie. But then I talked to her relatives when I spoke to the great-grandson, and I, I said, so, <laughs> come on, <laughs> What's what the deal? would she like? He's like, I don't know, I was too young to remember. He said, but I, I've tracked down other relatives, and here's what we got is that when the show started, they, they, they got well, an old lady who knew her very well, who okay. knew Nellie, the, the, one of the relatives who was still kicking, and she watched Little House and said, very accurate. <laughs> so apparently she was kind of hard. Rumor <laughs> is she wasn't like vicious, but quite the battle axe. <laughs> now, if you go, though, to Laura Ingalls Museum, the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum, Wall Grove, you will find that Laura was an old battle axe, too. Oh, really? Do you know, do you know that Laura shot her daughter's dog? <laughs> That's that terrible. I mean, there was some prairie-related reason. I don't know, maybe he was sick, but there's this whole horrible story of that Rose was away and she came back, and Laura's like, oh, I'm sorry, your dog was sick, had to shoot it. And oh, wow. there's, like, Laura had her gun in the case in the museum. And what people forget is in this time period, women were hard. Yeah. You couldn't really be all sweet and cuddly like Ma Ingalls. You wouldn't survive the week. Women of that era were hard. They were bitches by our definition because they were hard-bitten, tough old broads in order to survive. I mean, I've got stories I've heard about my great-grandmother that apparently she was just like the scariest woman in the world. <laughs> But that's how you, you don't live long. That's true. <laughs> you work like that.
So along comes this television show in 1974, and you're playing the most horrible person that ever lived. Did you ever get any hate mail or uh, any problems with uh, kids who were terrified of you? I got more flack from adults. I mean, I luckily, I kept a lot of the same friends that I'd known since the third grade. I stayed enrolled in school, so in junior high and high school, I was still hanging out with a lot of the same people, so they didn't care. Um, meeting new people was a little difficult. Um, I think more adults believed that I was really Nellie than people my age did. Because kids my age knew it had to be an act, because anybody really act like that would have gotten beaten senseless at school. So they knew you couldn't really <laughs> live that long if you were really that horrible. But I think adults believed that it was impossible for a 12 or 13 year old kid to be putting in a performance. It was like, well, she just must be awful. They just must bring her in in a cage or something and let her out and film the show. The idea that I could actually be acting, that actually struck adults as weird. And, and I had more, more flack from them, really. It's so funny because I remember back in the 70s when I was a kid and the show was so popular that girls in school actually dressed in period costumes. Yes. Like that. that I don't even know what that's called, if, that's, if there's some sort of a name for it's, dressing up like characters. Here's what's weird. They're still doing it. I mean, it's, it's like Trekkies. We call them houseies and bonnet heads. <laughs> And they're still at it. It's it's amazing. I mean, I I'm like I'm doing my show in New York in in June. I'll be at mm-hmm. Glory Beach, you know, on the 15th, 16th. I've had grown women show up in a nightclub in the evening <laughs> in New York, Seattle, other places, with their hair in braids, wearing bonnets, carrying little house in the prairie lunch boxes. And I'm like, okie dokie. Uh, but it's, we we call them bonnet heads. Um, people do dress up. I mean, there's these huge events. Like there's this thing. Actually, there's actually an event called Laura Palooza. Laura P- <laughs> Laura Palooza in, in Mankato. You remember on the show they were in Walnut Grove, and they were always driving over to Mankato for something. Well, in Mankato in, in uh, July, I'm going to go to Laura Palooza, and it's like all things Laura, and it's, it's more literary focused on the books and whatnot. But then they have the event in Walnut Grove, which is the whole Little House in the Prairie days, and they have a Nellie lookalike contest and a Laura lookalike contest and a whole pageant thing. There's a whole segment of the country out there that's still very much obsessed with this from the history angle from the book angle from the show angle and then you go overseas oh man go on facebook and see how many little house in the prairie pages are from argentina wow i mean and i just got back from france i'm in france half the year because la petite maison dans la prairie they can't get enough of their la petite maison and i i have the one woman show confessions of a prairie bitch but i i have a french version i have confession d'un gas i i do a whole show in french well, this is amazing, and I wonder, at the end of Laura Palooza, what do they do, burn you in effigy at the end right. of that? <laughs> <laughs> like Burning Man, burn a giant. I want to talk about because you have the you have the, uh, the, the live show, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch, and the book with the same title. Which came first? I, well, the show, really, which is weird because, um, I, you know, I've been writing about being on my life and being on the show and talking about doing a book for years, but... I guess in 2002 was when I really changed my stand-up back to a one-woman show where I told real stories. And I started telling just all true stories from my life of insane things that had happened to me. And then that's when I met I met the Kenty Wolf literary agent. I said, well, is there a book to go with this show? And I said, well, there is. And I had actually several chapters. But I really I was doing the show first, and then came the book. So it's, it's kind of nutty. I am holding the book in my hands as Excellent. I speak to you. The, paper, the paperback <laughs> edition. And it says your New York Times bestseller as well. It did. It did. It went to New York, it went to New York Times bestseller list. Uh, was, I was number 30 and 31. It was like for three weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. And do you know that when it came out in France, it was number 15 on the French bestseller list? What is it about the French? <laughs> I'm Olson. telling you. <laughs> I, when I found out the Little House in the Prairie was that popular in France, I'm like, oh, I am so getting in on this. And so now I go to France all the time. I, I went back to school. I didn't speak French until I was 40 years old. I learned a second language after 40. But I'll be hacking around France again in the fall. And then I'm on July, I'm going to Laura Palooza to Walnut Grove and Wisconsin, all these prairie events. And then I'm doing my show in Michigan at the, this big resort. So it's really weird. I have all these bookings. I'm all over the place doing the show and then doing these prairie events. And then I'm in France. And I go around to all these, like, small towns, like villages in the French countryside, and get up and do this whole bizarre show about Nellie Olson. 
So and we, it's packed, packed. I can imagine. They're like insane. Because it's, on, it's on, on M6, the big night. It's like every day at noon, they, they, people stop what they're doing and sit around and they must have a baguette and watch La Petite Maison. <laughs> you know, and when it, uh, I think it went into syndication while it was on. Yeah, we were still it was making on new, so long. It was a total yeah. of like nine years. So, yeah, we started having reruns. That was the period, I, th- I would say, when the money was the best, when you're making the show and getting the reruns right, simultaneously. Right. That was pretty good. Because I would watch it, and I, I have to, you know, I was uh, a young, uh, really young, but I was in, infatuated with uh, <laughs> Melissa Sue Anderson. So, uh, so yeah, I, you, and, you and all the other guys, right? Yeah, so it's then I, I get your book, <laughs> and I'm, wait, I'm holding it here, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you're, you're, you're uh, cruel. You know, you're being truthful about what happened on the on the set of Little House on the Prairie, and as it turns out, Mary may not have been quite the angel that. Uh, I certainly thought she was back in the day. I'm reading the book and I'm going, no, <laughs> no, not and Melissa. Boys would visit the set. And they'd all fall for poor Melissa Sue. Go, oh, she's so pretty. And she's like, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> 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 Melissa Gilbert and I would be like, but we'll take it lunch. Want to hang out with us? <laughs> well, you guys are friends, you and Melissa right? Gilbert. It's, it's so great. I went to see her when she's doing Dancing with the Stars. I even sat in in the audience and yelled and screamed. I, I was working all three phones in the house voting for her. <laughs> so when she's throwing you down the, uh, you know, into the pond or in the wheelchair and all that, you guys are actually having a good time, I'm oh, assuming. Oh, we're in hysterics. Our, our biggest problem was trying to do the fight scenes to keep a straight face and not just bust up laughing while we're filming. You can almost catch us laughing if you watch the episode with the mud fight, because there's a part they shot sure. with no sound. If you look, you can, like, catch us laughing. Confessions of a Prairie Bitch is not only the uh, the title of the book, but it's also the title of the show, June 15th and 16th at the Laurie Beachman Theater yep. in New York City. And there's something else I, I saw on your website, uh, and I uh, maybe it's only happening in France. I don't know if you're bringing it to the U.S., but what is this treasure in the trunks? Or yes, he's Milo Trezor, the Nelly Olsen, which is Nelly Olsen's trunk of treasure. So what do you have, memorabilia? <laughs> And it's always totally a French show. Uh, the, the guy who did the translation adaptation of my confession show into French, and I really say adaptation because you can't just translate it because some stuff just doesn't make any sense in another language or country. So there were things that were changed completely and other things kept the same. And he came to me and said, okay, we've been doing confessions. We've done this all over France. I have an idea for a, a sequel, another show. You know, the show we've got is almost 90 minutes long. This thing will be two hours with an intermission and be really like a lot of work. It'll be insane. But I think it's a great idea. You tell me if I'm crazy. I go, well, I know you're crazy, but run it by me. He goes, well, <laughs> we come up with this big trunk of stuff, and we have all sorts of things in it. And Nelly doll, a DVD, a bag of cookies, just strange props and things. And people get to pick something, and we say, ah, you have chosen this. And then they get that sketch or that story or that video clip. So the show's completely interactive. We have like an opening and a closing. But we have a whole section in the middle where we actually go out into the audience with a box of stuff, like it's some kind of children's theater circus <laughs> thing, and they get to pick a thing, and that's what the story they get for the show. So do you actually have like memorabilia from the show that you've kept? I- Indeed. I, we, we've got a Nelly doll and a Mrs. Olsen doll. And then we have crazy stuff, too. I have, like, a Smurf doll, because my mother did voiceover, and she was briefly a guest Smurf. She was a Smurf. Yeah. Oh, Smurf you know, I, I wanted to mention her, because right? in doing research for, for you, and I, I thought I knew everything about you, <laughs> but I didn't really. I'm a voice actor myself, and I, I looked up your mom, and I thought to myself, my God, all of Comic-Con would be on their knees bowing. <laughs> My mother Dirt. was Norma Macmillan. My mother was Gumby, damn it. Yes. Gumby, and Casper. Was, Casper the Friendly Ghost, she's Gumby, she's Sweet Polly, purebred, underdog's girlfriend, could you mm-hmm. die? And Davy of Davy and Goliath. Did your mother do these voices around the house, or? Well, I mean, not all the time. The funny thing is she kind of talked like that. She had a cute little high voice. I mean, mm-hmm. she'd leave messages in my answering machine. My friends were like, what is that? I go, it's my mother. <laughs> I was like, Casper. Um, but, yeah, she, I mean, she does what she did. This was her job. She'd go do cartoons. And when I was a kid, she was doing a lot of them, and she'd walk me to school, and I had friends who were like, get out of here. Your mother's not Gumby. So she'd come walk me to school. I'd go, do the Gumby thing. She goes, okay. And so she'd do Gumby, and they go, my God, she is Gumby. And <laughs> so she would do it. And, I mean, even as an adult, of course, as she said, like Comic-Con, as a grown-up, I had friends who were like, 
oh my God, your mother is gonna be your mother is gay. Right. Your mom is gonna would she would she do the sweet Polly thing if like if we like invite her to a party? We'll buy her a drink. We'll buy her dinner. And it, will she do? It's like yes, she will. So she, <laughs> she would still have to go. Okay, where where is my underdog gone? So you would think that they'd all be impressed with you, but in reality, well, my, that's the funny. My husband, but Bob Scooter for my husband Bob. When I met him at the AIDS Project Los Angeles, he was running the AIDS hotline. That's mm-hmm. where I met him as a volunteer. He had never watched Little House on the Prairie, didn't care who I was, but he found out who my mother was. He was, oh, your mother was sweet Polly Bear Bread. I need her. <laughs> and he got my mother's autograph. He was an underdog freak. He didn't care about Little House on the Prairie, but he loved underdog, and he was so impressed that my mother was sweet Polly Bear Bread. I think underdog freaks need their own name, too, something an equivalent right? to Bonnie. That's- and and I talk about that in my show. I talk about, you know, I can tell who's in it. It's like you have the Casper people, the Gumby people, the underdog people, and the Davy and Goliath people. And they're like four different species of geek. It's very strange. Wow. Lord of the geeks. Who knew? Right? <laughs> Who knew? A lot of geeks between like the Casper thing and the Little House thing. I, I am a geek magnet. I <laughs> you know, I have to ask you, and I'm sure you get asked about it all the time, you know, working with Michael Landon because he's such a beloved TV figure, and you know when when uh, Little House on the Prairie was uh, was first on, I was attending actually a Christian school, and you know the emphasis was on uh, morality and family values, and of course Michael Landon was held up as uh, someone to aspire to. Oh, they had like a shrine, to yes. him, no doubt, yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But in uh, in in reality. Uh, well, for starters, your Christian school might have had an issue with the fact that his real name was, was Eugene Orowitz, and he was a practicing Jew. Right. He's buried right. in a Jewish cemetery. So Michael Landon, not a Christian, because he was, in fact, Jewish. Um, and he had had a bar mitzvah and everything. But the show was interesting, because he, he, he had, as I said, he was like Charles Ingalls, except when he wasn't. Here he was drinking and smoking and marrying, divorcing and divorcing and remarrying, and all of these things, very not Charles Ingalls. But he had a really solid work ethic, and he was really good with us kids. And he was always stressing education and hard work and do your job. So he was real rah rah about all these really Charles Ingalls kind of things. Right. So we had that sort of influence. But he was sort of fascinated with religion and spirituality. So the show is terribly religious and spiritual. But then, like it, I don't know, the Ingalls were what Lutherans or something, and Michael <laughs> yeah. had no idea what they were even talking about. Like, how does that go? <laughs> I don't think he had to, like, learn bringing in the sheaves. But at the same time, he works stuff in. I mean, that's why then you have the character of Percival, who's Jewish, and the whole thing with his parents and Nellie's parents, and the whole thing about Judaism versus Christianity. And you had the episode where Albert becomes friends with the coffin makers, Jewish. So he started, like, working in stuff about different religions and their conflicts, because this, this was something that had fascinated him all his life. You have a, a pretty good memory for these episodes. I'll tell you, you're better than I am, actually. Well, you know, and I think it's because in my show I even do a question and answer segment. I have cards that say, ask Allison anything, and I actually distribute those to the audience. <laughs> like, really, ask me anything. And so I, be, I get asked. I get, I get a lot of, like, you know, stump the actress. You know, what was the name of the football team when the <laughs> town moved to it? Like, Winoka Warriors. Oh, my God, she knows that. And they don't expect that. I, I play stump the audience. <laughs> if I find that they're really hardcore bonnethead geeks, I'll ask them to, like, name everyone on the show who is related to each other. I can't even answer that one. <laughs> right? See, well, you got, you got the baby Carrie twins. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sure. You got the baby Grace twins. Mm-hmm. But then you had the baby Rose twins. Then you had my twins, Benny and Jenny. So that's just the twins playing, <laughs> you know, one baby and then sure. Benny and Jenny, two babies. But then Melissa Gilbert and Jonathan Gilbert, brother and sister. And then you had Matt Laberto and Pat Laberto. And then you have to count also Etta Plum was played by Leslie Land and Michael's daughter. Holy mackerel. Right? <laughs> this is a, it's like <laughs> so the like, Little House this board is the kind game. Of stuff that drives trivia buffs mad. They love this <laughs> right. stuff. So, so yes, know, because I keep getting asked these things, I've gotten pretty good. Now and again, though, someone will ask me about certain episodes, and I'm just like, I was so spaced out that day. Did I film that? No, I don't remember that. <laughs> Some you know, the, were just gone. <laughs> now, you mentioned your TV husband on the show, Percival. Yes. And if I, as I recall... Percival straightened you out. Yes, he did. Yes. That. He became a national hero because he told right. Mrs. Olsen to shut up <laughs> and got right. Nellie to, like, chill out and be nice. And I don't, you know, I only have so much time with you, and I don't want to short shrift these important things that you're doing. Oh, good, because I have another plug I have to give you. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Well, no, this, listen, the actor Steve Tracy, who who sadly passed away in, yes. from AIDS in, in 1986. Right. 
he was great on the show. It was. Uh, oh, he's fantastic, and we were really good friends. And that's the thing is because he went public with his AIDS diagnosis mm-hmm. when no one was doing that, and that's how I got involved in volunteering for AIDS. And I still do. I still go around and try to help smaller AIDS organizations, and um, and that is how I, my other plug. And that's how I met my husband, Bob Schoonover, my actual real husband, who I met at the yes. AIDS project. Um, he has a band, and they have a CD out. So. Right, well, the, the name of this show is That Modern Rock Show. So what's the band and what's They're the CD? They're called Catahoula, which is C-A-T-A-H-O-U-L-A. Catahoula as in the state dog of Louisiana. Mm-hmm. Catahoula as in that Catahoula, like the dog. Um, or like Parish of Catahoula in Louisiana. Right. Because they're kind of, I don't know, Louisiana swamp rock. They become, I say they sound like if Fleetwood Mac and Hart went to Mardi Gras together and got, like, totally smashed and jammed for a week, <laughs> this is what they would sound like when they came back. Catahoula, are they on Facebook? God, they're on everything. They're oh, on okay. Facebook, they have a website, they're on iTunes, they're on CD Baby, they're on everything. And um, their new one, it's called, it's their second one, they had a first one, Catahoula, the second one is called Second Sight. And, you know, and they're singing about voodoo and Big Mamu and swamps and fire on the poncha train and, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, maybe they could be your opening act at the uh, Laurie Beachman Theater. You know, see, that's what I want to do. I want to, yeah. like, book a big room and have, the, yeah, and have, have like, a band. Right. <laughs> so I have an opening act. I have a band. <laughs> or they could play Laura Palooza. It's, it's... God, they'd be, yeah, I think they'd like them at Laura Palooza, actually. They'd have to just come up with songs that were, you know, had tied into the show somehow. Yeah, they had, oh, yeah, we prairie-oriented. <laughs> yeah, it's not that many. And I should mention that the entirety of Little House on the Prairie is out on DVD. You know, all nine seasons and uh, the movies, so if you want to... Uh, Relive it all over again if you, you want you to. Can, yeah. you can, oh, you can. Uh, my favorite Little House thing is it's out on DVD in every language, by the way. You can get it in Dutch, German, French. Wow. I just got the Japanese DVDs. <laughs> Truly <laughs> awesome hearing Nelly speak Japanese. Totally worth it. You have to wait weeks for it to ship. It costs a fortune on Amazon, worth every penny. Get the Japanese DVDs. Um, but I love are the YouTube mashups. <laughs> okay. People have gone on YouTube and done. There's one where they did uh, clips of me and Percival to Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. Wow! <laughs> really, really <laughs> clever, creative, crazy, crazy stuff. But um, yeah, the Little House on the Prairie music mashups are truly fabulous. Somebody on here on YouTube is madly in love with with Ma Ingalls with Karen Grassley who is Caroline. Oh, okay, because sure. they do they have a whole like I love Caroline thing and it's beautiful pictures of of Karen set to pretty music. Wow, it's like crush much? Wow. Um, <laughs> where is it here? Yes, there's an interview, and then I think this is it. yeah. Look at this. This is, this is all these pretty pictures here, and is this the one? Is this the I love her one? This is just really crazy. Oh well, well there you you got your marching orders, listeners. You have to check out some YouTube. I I'm who knows what you'll find there. It might be frightening too. Yeah, yeah. Look at Karen Grassley. Is it just all these pictures and uh, it's Hey Delilah? They're playing like Hey Delilah and running all these like gorgeous eight by tens. Karen Grassley. <laughs> <laughs> that is so yeah, bizarre. Don't go on YouTube and and dig at the note. You'll crack yourself up. Uh, and there's stuff on my stand up back there, and there's Catahoula is there. Everybody's right. There. And there's footage of you speaking uh, French, which blew me away. Is that weird? Or yeah. What? It looks, it's even weird to me, and it's me. <laughs> and uh, the website, your website. Yes, indeed. You can visit me. I am at www.hgd.com slash Allison. It's because it's Howie Green, who's a very interesting person in Boston. He's an artist. Howie Green Design uh, presents the official Allison Arngram Confessions of a Prairie Bitch and Nellie Olson website. So oh, okay. At the short version, hgd.com slash Allison. And um, we have uh, always the latest update because we have the uh, Nelly newsletter that goes out every month. So that's up and um, where to order the book and everything. Am- order on Amazon, order on Barnes and Noble, order Borders, order on Indie Bound, order from the Walnut Grove Museum and get it signed. Um, yeah, pretty much anything you want. I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on. It's oh, been thank you. it's been a fun experience and a bit weird because I can still hear Nelly Olson in your voice. Right, well, I, I still. I mean, that's like, I do sound like people say, "Oh, you talk like Nelly." This is kind of it. It's right. well, Nelly sort of had a very proper Canadian accent. My family are Canadian, and <laughs> so in trying to be uppity and snooty, I would try to speak like my mother with very <laughs> enunciated diction and Canadian pronunciation. Laura, <laughs> yes, I doesn't can... that creep you out? I'm shaking in my uh, in my chair here, thinking, <laughs> oh, no. It's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks so much uh, oh, thank for you. coming on. June 15th and 16th, the Laurie Beachman Theater in New York City, the live rendition of Confessions of a Prairie Bitch. 
and it's been a blast talking to you. Oh, thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.